If you are worried about your previous business and personal data to hardware failure, accidental deletion or virus and malware, one of the scariest threats is ransomware attack. These malicious programs encrypt your data and demand a hefty ransom for decryption. Without backups, you are at their mercy. But with a regular backup, you can confidently restore system efficiently after unexpected events. Welcome back to our channel Go Dynamic IT. In today's video, we are going to discuss about Ease Us To Do Backup. We will review the feature of the Ease Us To Do Backup and create a backup task. So without any further delay, let's get into the video. Okay, so you can see here, this is my browser and inside the browser, you have to go and type ease us to do backup free. So once you click on the backup, this you can see this uh, black color icon here, E. So just click on the free backup of this software. It will take you to this web website, ease us website, and then click on the free download. So I have already downloaded this program and uh, this is pretty simple this is very small like 2.6 mb file just go ahead and download it from here see the hardware requirement of this software so this will work on all this uh, win windows operating system including uh, starting from windows xp to windows 11 and then it will support the ntfs fat fat 32 and fat 12 you need a minimum 1 gb of ram and cpu is 500 megahertz and then the ram is at least 1g okay now coming back to the installation installation is also pretty simple just a straightforward you have to click next 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 finish and that's it nothing to do with it. okay so let's open the software you can see the software and it's launching now one of the great and clean interface of this system. so it's you can come to this interface and it's straightforward it says that uh, do you want to create a backup yes I do. I do want to create a backup but I just wanted to spend few time to explore the feature of the software reason being is you never know like when this feature will be handled for you right so once you know that this tool provide you this feature you can come back anytime and configure it so let's go back to this uh, tools here and you can see the first system first option is clone and before we can see here these are the uh, the diamond marks here the orange diamond mark that means these are the pre this will only this feature you can utilize this feature once we have the the license version or upper version of this software so let me tell you this clone is like cloning your one of the drive to the external one so let's say I, if we want to clone my c drive i can go to the next and i say that where you want to clone with the target drive so we have to select the target and click on the next so it will copy the exact it will clone your c drive to any of the drive c drive e drive whatever drive you want to do that now it says there was the system clone what the system clone system clone is including your operating system environment everything so if you click on the system you can see here this is the windows 10 this is a complete operating system and where you want to target is asking about the target so let's say if i select this e drive this is my external drive it will go and copy the complete windows that that's it that including your program data everything all of this thing now let's go to the other tool other the system transfer what is system transfer transfer your file complete file from one system to another system this is how we user system transfer so this is especially uh, uh, for the same let's say you have an old system you are upgrading to the new system let's say you have a i3 laptop and you are migrating from i3 laptop to i5 or i7 laptop and you want all the data everything to be transferred from one location to other location so you can select your uh, network drive here and you can transfer it to the new system they trying to check the image so check the image is an option like say you have a couple of backups here and you think that that's corrupted or uh, that is not working as per Properly. so you can go ahead and check that image whether they are, they are corrupted or we are working fine or not you can see this pbd file this is the backup file of this backup and then you have a uh, emergency disk so emergency disk is a file where you create emergency disk in case of your system got failure or some reason you can go ahead and insert this disk and repair your system this is called the uh, emergency disk now enable the pos so, so pos is imagine that uh, you have seen in the windows 7 when your system got crashed you have a when you press the f5 or f7 it will give you the option you want to log with the windows 10 or you want to log with the login with the pre os is a pre -OS, os so you can log it with that and you have a backup of your system you can go ahead and restore it okay what is the next next is like mount and unmount so you can go ahead and mount your drive and unmount your drive from your system logs you can go ahead and check your logs whether the files have been synced or uh, backup everything this is log this is this is check about like you are successful warning failed all about your backup information so what is the refresh disk refresh disk is like you can go ahead and refresh your disk let's say click on the distance so if refreshing one now this is called a security zone so security zone is a this tool is provided by uh, either today so what is does is let's say you have a d drive this is called d drive and this is a 100 gb space of this hard drive so when you create this security zone what is that is it will ask you for that how much disk you want to allocate for the security so let's say you allocate this uh, 50 gb space for this security zone so what is that is it will deduct this 
this space and create a new disk here new partition here and this will be hidden one it create a hidden partition so what is the benefit of, of it so it will protect you from malware ransomware or any thing which you think about that which can harm your data it will hide from all of those programs this will create a zone on the your hard disk, disk itself partition itself okay now let's move to the next one next one is backer protection what is the backer protection so backer protection is like it will create a protection on your existing drive itself so let's say this is your drive this is the 10 gb drive and you have all the backups on d drive or you can see the e drive so when you enable this protection on it it will as i say that this will create a encryption on this disk so that any uh, malicious activity or any third party trying to change your backup it will protect from this so don't get confused with security zone and backer protection security zone it will uh, create a hidden partition for you and backer protection it will be on the drive as you want but it will be encrypted and it will be protected from your malicious and any third party software which can harm your data so that's it for about these tools and if you have any questions if you want to create an in-depth video on any of these things do let me know i'll create a video on it so now it's time to create a backup so what we will do is let's create a backup here so create on backup what the name you want to give on the nearby so let's say i want to give the important file the name of the file will be important file and you want to select the file which file you want to select so let's click on the desktop and i would select this important files click on the ok now it's time to select the destination where you want to save so in the destination let's go to our e drive what is that inside that we have nothing okay so we have a folder called backup so let's select the local backup so you have a four actually four option here. local drive easiest cloud backup and network and securities where do you want to keep this back so as of now we'll go with local drive itself click on the local drive and go to the e and select this backup 01 and click on the okay so now this is the source and this is the destination and here you can see there is an options here so when you click on the options here you say that there are the options here what do you want to do that you enable the backup mode you can create image or, or native format file Imagement, image mode means it will uh, create a file which will be only readable by the users today. But when you enable this native file format, means it will just copy this. It will take the backup from here and put it in the destination drive. This is the native file format. So let's create in the image mode only. When you select the performance, what type of performance you want? You want to compression to be normal, fast or high. So, but these are all like premium. Once you buy it, this will be enabled. So let's click the normal stuff. We don't have any problem with that. Backup is splitting. So we want to split the backup or uh, you want to keep so let's keep it automatically itself and here you have an option for encryption encryption means locking the file just lock the file so that you will be only able to unlock it because you will have the password here so let's say so what will happen if you not do that somebody gets your backup he can restore on his system right but when you encrypt it even though someone get this file they cannot decrypt it because you have the password or you have the key for it so let's do this here is the option about your pre commands what commands you want to do that so let's click on the edit and click on the browse and you can see you can give the pre commands like what uh, commands it will run before this uh, and uh, before the backup and what commands it will run after the backup and offsite copy you want to copy this one of the copy on the ftp like one copy will go to the external drive and the other one will go to your Offsite. Offsite means your FTP or uh, SFTP, whatever you want. The file settings. These are all the file settings and other uh, things you can configure as for your requirement. Let's go to what is in the scheme. So scheme, you can see here. This is the manual backup, one-time backup. This is would be perform the full backup. When we but when we go to daily backup, you can see here the, the moment you select the daily backup, it it will enable the incremental backup. So let's say every day at 20:30, I want to take the backup. So I can go ahead and enable this incremental backup. So every day at 20:30, it will enable the backup. So you have a other option also like weekly backup you can go and take the weekly backup let's say and i want the backup on tuesday and friday so this is how it will run the backup and again you can select that what time you want to take the backup so let's say 20 30 so tuesday and monday, tuesday and friday it will run the backup at 20 30 monthly backup also same thing you can go ahead and select the monthly backup let's say every week right you want to take the backup on uh, every week so you can go ahead and, and select it depends on like what is your requirement i want if a event means like anything happen on the event let's anything file any file you change in the backup you can go ahead and it this software will go ahead and take the backup so it, a smart backup is like you can see here this will read your file for every 30 minutes and when you say that there is change in every 30 minutes it will go ahead and take the back and filters you can uh, filter like uh, files let's say these this will not take the backup of your recycle bin and your uh, backup file temp file and these are the folders you will not back up because these are all like unnecessary which keep your fill up your space and obviously there is a, if a, there is an iso file or exe file 
which is like a huge file, right? When you have ISO for Windows ISO, it's like four to five GB of space. When you have EXE program, that was also the EXE programs are huge and big. You can exclude this from here. You can go ahead and browse it and then you can select the file and exclude. Now let's come to the notification. So notification is something that you, it will send the email to you. So you have to type the email to email, like two means uh, from which he will send the email. So let's say uh, example one, let's say my, my name is Akash. So Akash at the rate hotmail.com and then uh, this will be the computer name and this is the file name because this is one I have a file name given here and it will be the SMTP. So let, let's say I have a Akash at red gmail.com. That's my email ID. I want once a once this backup program completed, I want an email from this system. So it, I have to give my email ID here. This is the desktop and this is the plan name and SMTP. So SMTP will be smtp.google.com. Yes, you can it will be like smtp.google.com. And then you have to type the SMTP port number. So let's say this is the 445 and your and the, your sender email ID, username and password. So you are sending the you have created one email ID called uh, desktop. ABC something like this. Let's say this is the uh, V91 something. So create an email ID. Just add the username and password here and the display name here. And this check this select this both the checks option and click on the OK. So it will send the once the backup complete, it will send the mail to your address. So let's say go to our uh, backup and uh, let's say daily backup and 2030 and click on the OK. And one thing when you're not sure what are the changes you have made, you can reset to the initial. So what is that is whatever parameters we have changed, it will come back to the default one. And uh, let's say backup mode, image backup. So OK, back and backup now. You can see this is a started taking the backup and this should be the quick one because uh, we do not have much data on that file, uh, just like 2030 MB file on it. So this uh, just 32 MB file and this is complete. You can see this is the pop up message it says that so let's go back to our important files i can see this is the file is complete and this is called the image backup and i showed you the option right? where you say the native one it will show you the folder inside the folder it will show you all the files but you can one more thing i just wanted to show you that this is the good feature i noticed that is a sync it will sync your data from one computer to another computer so let's take the example of here let's say um let me delete this let me take the example of this is your laptop and this is your system one desktop or maybe the another laptop here let's say this is the another laptop and this is your Wi-Fi sorry for my drawing this is a Wi-Fi this is connected to your Wi-Fi this is also connected to your Wi-Fi so what are the other what are the mediums where you can copy the data between the system you should have the pen drive or you should have a network sharing or you should have some way enabling some some soft third-party software you can copy the data from one system to another system let's say you are a content creator and somebody is working on your thumbnail or or ABC things kind of thing script or something so the moment you were you started working on this uh, files so let's say when you edited some files here and save the file the moment you save the file this file will show up here this will sync from this system to this system and you can see what he has edited so anything which change which you made on here so it depends on what type of sync you have enabled you can see you can see even the one-way sync or the bi-directional sync so when you have a bi-directional sync enable even if you edit anything on this one it will go it will show and reflect on on this this is the cool feature on um, on this ease studio to do backup so if you demand for this video i'll create a custom video on also so i think we have covered uh, pretty much uh, everything on this uh, free software so that's it for today's video if you have any questions comment or any feedback related to this video please do let me in the comment box and thank you very much for watching my video